This integrated math three practice test for TCAP or ten ready. Question number three, we're in the no calculator section. Wah wah. The question says what value or s of x makes the equation three over the quantity x plus three equals nine over the quantity x squared minus nine true. Write your answers in the spaces provided on your answer document. If there is only one answer, leave the other space blank. That's what there is is clipped off over here. Sorry about that. Anyway, the question itself uh, just wants you to know, uh, just wants to know what the values of x are that make this true, of course. Uh, the idea that there might be more than one answer is validated by the fact that there's an x squared here. So immediately that you could go ahead and think like, okay, I'm just going to do cross products or cross multiply and divide, whatever you say in your world. This and this. Um, that's fine. You're welcome to do that. Just make sure that you multiply 9 by the entire quantity x plus 3. If you multiply 3 by the entire quantity x minus 9. You can't just multiply it by the x and x squared term. It doesn't work that way. Uh, I could also say that, well, if this goes and I'm multiplying by 3 to get there, it's kind of my scale. If I multiply this by 3, I should get this. So another thing that I could do is say 3 times x plus 3 is equal to x squared minus 9. Sort of eliminate the middle demand. You might get a little bit of smaller numbers in that scenario. It doesn't always work, so just adjust for the question, I guess. Um, this is a non-calculator section, and sometimes your multiplication may be awesome, and it may be like spotty, so the lower the numbers, the easier it's likely to be. So I have 3x and 3 times 3 being 9. So I'm going to move everything over to the same side of the equation. I have no interest whatsoever in having a negative x squared, so I'm going to move these terms instead. 9 is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 9, and then you'll subtract 9 from both sides here. See, I'm running out of space. Sorry about that. So I'm going to bring it up here and have my new true blue equation now, x squared minus 3x, negative 9 minus 9 is not 0, it's negative 18. So there we go with all that fun in the sun. And all we have to do now is do a little bit of factoring, or, I mean, there's lots of options. By the way, this is equal to 0, so that's why we can do factoring. Uh, 9 minus 9 does equal 0, but I'm going to put it here on the back, just because that's what probably you're used to seeing. So as you can see, there's lots of options. You could go ahead and do factoring, which is probably what I'm going to do. Um, I could also uh, work out where I use the quadratic equation. That's also handy dandy and super fun and, um, you know, whatever. So here we go. If I'm doing a factoring situation here, this sign tells me that both the signs in my factoring answer not my solutions, my factoring answer, are going to be different. So I'm going to have x plus and x minus. Uh, and then I'm going to make a factor list for 18. Because I'm looking for a situation where I have two numbers that multiply to give me 18, but subtract. If the signs that you're given are opposites, you have to subtract to find the middle term. If they're the same, whether they're both, min both minus or both plus, you can add them to get to that point. And by the way, just because if this was plus and this was minus, they would still be the opposite. This is the sign that tells you whether they're the same or the opposite, in case you didn't. Remember that from Math 2 or whatever. Or it's been a while. I know how that goes. So 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. Well, here's my set. And I could either do 3 minus 6 or I could do 6 minus 3. This gives me positive 3. This gives me negative 3. I want negative 3, so I'm going to choose this set. So the 3 goes after the plus, and the 6 goes after the minus. Now what do I do? I'm going to solve. I'm going to use the zero product property. Minus 3, minus 3. I'm assuming at this point you don't need to, me to show you that. Because you're smart folks. Plus 6, plus 6. Now, the only thing I have to look for is what are called restrictions in the domain. If I have a fraction, I'm not allowed to have zero in the domain of, uh, in the denominator of a fraction. That breaks the rules of math. You can't divide 
uh, by zero parts. You can divide zero into as many parts as you want, so zero divided by five is possible, so zero divided by a trillion. You could have no candy and share it with all your friends. Everybody gets nothing. But you can't divide by zero because that breaks the rules. I thought division works. So I have to look to see if I have any restrictions in my domain. This seems questionable. Uh-oh. One of my answer choices theoretically was x minus 3, but it's also a restriction in the domain, which means it can't be true. Otherwise, it makes the whole system fall apart. It's like the end of Fight Club. And then you do the same thing here. Add 9 to both sides of equaling 0, and then take the square root, so plus or minus 3. Neither one of those are in x is equal to 6, so your final answer is x is equal to 6. If you wanted to see this, it would be... That would make plus or minus 3 a restriction in the domain. But in this case, the only one I have left is x is equal to 6. So if there is only one answer, there is only one answer, so that means you'll leave your an other answer block blank. So when you have x squared, it often means that you'll have two answers, but it doesn't always mean that you'll have two answers. So be very careful with your signs. Make sure you're checking for your uh, domain restrictions, and uh, you work it out in the way that makes the most sense to you as you go through the problem.